This video was a ton of effort, you can see the editing right now, I had to gather all the information, save it, put it in, edit it, and of course record everything and rewatch it multiple times to make sure all is right, so if you have the 5 seconds, please just give the video a like if you liked it at the end of watching. Also, in the description is a link to my playlist, you see some interesting titles on your screen right now, I do record runs, I do challenges, and I usually tend to explain what I'm doing, and if I did something stupid, then I also say I did something stupid, so I think everyone could learn something there. I hope you enjoy the video. Welcome back to another Vampire Survivors video, and today we will take a look at all the weapons, items and evolutions that you can get in the game on the current update, so please check the date of this video. If it's a future update, it might have missing stuff. Big shout out to the official Vampire Survivor server, they have a channel where you can just write exclamation mark and then for example fire wand and it will show all the upgrades that the fire wand can get per level up. Also, if you were just looking for combinations to get evolved weapons, here's a list. Okay? I, th I hope you're happy. But now, let's dive into the depth of the game and check out all the weapons and items and evolved weapons. Now, first of all, I'll start with a list that includes all the weapon and item evolutions. So, just alphabetically, the first one is the axe. The axe is not bad, it has very high damage, so if you walk below an enemy, then you deal quite significant damage, especially against bosses, but that's kind of also it. It just flies and it doesn't hit that many enemies compared to other weapons, like yes, it increases over time, as you can see, but it, it's not that good. To evolve the axe, you need a Kent Labrador, and this one increases the area by 10%. Uh, qu quite a very interesting item, I personally like it a lot. Um, but yeah, that is pretty much it, and once you pick up a chest, it will evolve to the Death Spiral. One of the most insane items probably in the game, not only does it have a very very solid damage output, but also it pushes back the enemies and it has an infinite piercing, right? Like, it, it just doesn't stop, it just keeps going until it's out of the screen. So this weapon, I would say probably top tier. X itself, not really good, but once you have it evolved, top tier. Next up on the list, the cross. The cross is very interesting, it's more like a boomerang, and it just flies out and then it flies back until it leaves the screen. It deals okay damage, but it's mostly used for clearing waves once it's a, at a higher level. Because you have so many projectiles, it just hit everything. You use the clover to upgrade it, which is a double-edged sword. Because on one side, increased luck is nice. A lot in the game is affected by luck. Um, for a full list, I think I'll make a video on that. But uh, yes, other than that, it doesn't help you in any way, right? Like no damage or so. But it upgrades to the Heaven Sword. Now the Heaven Sword actually does benefit from luck because it can critically strike and the higher your luck, the higher the chance that it strikes. And it's just a flying sword that attacks the enemies. You know, it flies towards them and strikes them, similar to the cross how it attacks. Uh, and you can have multiple weapons out. It's really good for killing bosses, I, I gotta say. Not the, not the top pick, but overall I would say the Heaven Sword, also with its knockback, probably deserves a higher ranking on the list, definitely not as high as Death Spiral, but very, very solid. Next up in the alphabetical order is the Fire Wand. The Fire Wand just shoots out at a random enemy, which can be very good or very bad, especially if the enemy is just one, you know, and you shoot out five fireballs. Not so great, but its damage is insane. If you get a full shot off of like five projectiles next to a boss, there's a good chance he will die if it's an early boss. The item to evolve the weapon is Spinach, and Spinach is considered a very, very solid item, um, probably in the second highest tier, just because it affects almost all the weapons in the game and raises your damage by a solid 50%. That is a lot for just an item, I like compared it to Clover. And the evolution out of the Fire Wand is the Hellfire. Now the Hellfire is pretty much king, while the Fire Wand is pretty much trash. The issue with the Fire Wand is that it hit only hits a very small amount of enemies and it overkills like crazy. But the fi Hellfire, similar to the Death Spiral, it just penetrates through all the enemies. It doesn't stop. It, the, the projectile doesn't disappear. It becomes very huge, especially if you use the Candle Labrador, and it, it massive damage. Massive damage. I wouldn't rate it as good as a Death Spiral, because it still only goes in its own path. So if it's a bad shot, then you just hit five enemies and it's gone. But overall, very, very solid weapon. I would say at least A tier, if S is the highest. Next up, we have the Garlic, one of the most controversial weapons in the game. 
Because you either have a group of people that hate it, or you have a group of people that absolutely love it. My take on it, I think both is valid. Garlic in the late game does very little for you. The reason is that you are so overpowered and so strong that nothing gets close to you, so they don't even walk into the garlic. Garlic in the early game, however, is insanely good. It allows you to instant clear the enemies, level up faster, break candles immediately. Um, overall, a solid upgrade path. I like it a lot. It increases the knockback on enemies that walk on top of the garlic. And yeah, I'm a big fan of garlic, but I would say... If I would play normally, I probably wouldn't pick Garlic unless I just want to, you know, have a comfortable build. But aside from that, I don't think there is a use for it. However, especially in record runs and challenges, Garlic is often insanely good because you have to go for so many economy upgrades that you are super weak. And Garlic is probably the strongest weapon early game because it just kills all the enemies instantly. So you can collect a ton of experience and level up quickly to get... You know, to a stage where you can actually kill enemies. Pumarola, that is the red heart that you need to upgrade the garlic. Garbage. It just recovers 0.1 HP per second. On level 5 with 0.5 HP per second, you need 60 seconds for the equivalent of picking up one rosary chicken. No, it's not called rosary chicken. But it's a chicken on the floor. But, but that's horrible. It, it, it's horrible. I, 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 nah, 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 let's not talk about that. Soul Eater... You know, if you if you talk about an evolved weapon, you have to consider what item it takes to evolve there, right? Like, you can't, you can't just talk about it as if the item wouldn't affect its rating. Soul Eater doesn't do a lot more than garlic. It, it drains HP from enemies sometimes. But, th like, at a late game stage where you don't really need garlic anymore because your weapons kill and push back the enemies so they don't even get there, I personally think this is way worse than garlic. Like, garlic hype? Uh, okay, King Bible. King Bible is very interesting. Now, King Bible on its own is very strong. Uh, pretty much the moment you pick it up. The only problem is it's downtime and it m can be hard sometimes to hit enemies. But overall, really great. Just rotates around your player and depends on the duration upgrades that you have. And that's pretty much it. Brazers or projectile speed does affect it, but that doesn't change too, too much, except that you're more likely to clear out entire waves. Overall, very solid weapon. Spellbinder as item to evolve it is good. It's okay. Okay, let's say it's okay. When you have the right stuff to use it, it's amazing. But usually when you just want to run full power, you'll run a build that only has like two weapons that need Spellbinder and are affected by it, and that's it. So it's it's like, it's it's not bad, you know, you can you could make a build around it, and then it's way better. Uh, but then we have the Unholy Vespers. Boy, oh boy, if you thought King Bible is strong, then take a look at these. The black books just rotate around you in insane speed, which can be upgraded further with Brazers. You can increase the rotation area, so the circle becomes bigger, if you use the Candle Labrador, and the Spellbinder extends how long they rotate around you. And at max of a level, you can actually have multiple rotations around you. Like, not just one circling, but two. Because they they are around you for so long that the attack begins all over. So you have, like, a double set of books there. Really interesting. Overall, uh, I'm a big fan of it. And, yeah. I, I, would, I would say if Death Spiral is S tier... Unholy Vespers is either high A tier or also S tier. The only issue is that Unholy Vespers is limited to this circle. Now, it will almost always push back the enemies because they don't get through, but if they get through, uh, then you have some kind of issues, you know, because they, they got through. It, but it's not that likely. But bosses can do it. Some bosses. Knife. Oh, boy. Okay. Knife just shoots in the direction you're facing. For certain record runs, challenge runs or so, knife is amazing because it's it's like it's a bit like garlic, you know. If you don't have the power, the knife is absolutely amazing because you can use your skill and your aim to kill the enemies, right? That that is good. The issue I have with it is that you have to actively play for 30 minutes to maximize its power. Otherwise, you just, you know, shoot into nothing. It, it, it's not bad, right? It, ha it has its reasons why it can be good, but it also has its reasons why it can be bad. Brazer. Very inter uh, interesting item to evolve the uh, weapon. 
Now, it increases projectile speed, but don't confuse this with attack speed. Uh, it's only projectile speed, how fast something flies, but for example, for something like Unholy Vesper, absolutely amazing. For something like Death Spiral and Hellfire, it can lead to a scenario where you deal less damage, but it's unlikely. Well, for Death Spiral, it's more likely for Hellfire as well. Pretty much what I'm talking about is a scenario where if the Hellfire is flying out, it kills enemies in its path. And once the enemies are dead and the death animation is gone, the other enemies will fill the gap that this projectile created. Now, if the projectile is very slow, they will constantly walk on top of the projectile again, right? But the faster it flies, the faster it goes through the enemies. And once the death animation is gone and the enemies can close in, the projectile might already have passed everyone. So... It's good overall. Like I would say it's okay, but you really have to consider what weapons you have and if it's really uh, an upgrade to your damage. Thousand Edge, it's pretty much like Knife. Like Knife shoots so many projectiles that there is for quite a while not a big difference between these two. Um, but yeah, overall, it's pretty much the same thing, just that it doesn't stop firing. But if you have max attack speed um, or cooldown reduction for your DE attacks, it's not that much different, but I think it shoots a couple more blades or something. It, it, it's not bad. Like, honestly, I like it. I just think it's very situational, and if something is situational, then it can't be in the top tiers, right? Um, because in all the other cases, it's not that good. Magic Wand. Now, for a very long time, this was one of my most favorite weapons. Um, it fires at the closest enemy, and it promotes a lazy playstyle, or rather... Less punishment if you like if you were looking away, right? Let's be honest. At one point in the game, if you are fully buffed and you have played multiple rounds, you might just look at a YouTube video and something amazing happens. You look over there and the boss spawns, and he's about to kill you. And magic wand saves your butt because it just keeps firing at that boss that managed to get through, or some enemies that managed to get through your lines, and just kills them or pushes them back. That's the only real use that I see for this weapon. One thing that gives a huge boost to its evolution, though, is the item that is required to evolve it. Uh, because it's the Empty Tome, it reduces the weapon's cooldown by 8% per level. Now, items always have 5 levels, weapons have 7 to 8 levels. Most of the main weapons that deal damage have 8 levels, and the weapons that have other effects have 7 levels. But yes, at max, this reduces your weapon's cooldown by 40%. And you can make quite some insane builds using Arca, who has a base 15% weapon cooldown reduction, 40% from Empty Tome, and I think another 5% from your power-ups. So that's a combined total of 60% reduced weapon cooldown reduction. Huh, that would be very interesting with Pentagram. Regardless, the upgrade is a Holy Wand. The Holy Wand is similar to the Thousand Edge, where it just keeps firing. There's no delay, it just keeps firing all the time. Right? It's... It's, it's Honestly, at that point, it's a very decent weapon where it can actually kill enemies. Like, masses of enemies. The whip. Similar to the garlic, the whip has a very, very strong early game. Because it swipes on both of your sides, it pushes back enemies. You can just, you know, go towards a wall or something where you can hide and just slap out of the wall there. <laughs> under the enemies. Um, it's not bad. Like, I wouldn't rate it super low, but on a S to D tier list, I would probably put it somewhere at B, you know? Like, it has its uses, especially on certain challenges and, and record runs, but that's also kind of it. It's limited to the left and the right side, goes slightly towards the upper side, but if someone comes from below, you'll have a lot of problems. Um, especially walking down, like, if you walk to the top side of the map and then you walk down, boy, you'll take a lot of damage. Hollow Heart increases max HP, absolute trash. I don't even want to talk about it. Uh, which obviously affects the Evolve Weapons rating. Bloody Tear straight up to D. Okay, don't hate me if you love the Bloody Tear. You can use any weapons that are on this list. Like, right, no matter what I say, if you enjoy them, use them. If you have certain combinations, hell, use them. I just use it to explain uh, in normal circumstances why something would be considered quite bad. Um, and here it's a hollow heart. And also the upgrade is not really that good. I think the bloody tier actually has less projectiles than the whip. So if you increase the projectiles, it will hit multiple times. And I think the whip hits a limit of four. Two from the duplicator. Hmm, no, that doesn't make sense. It should have five. I guess it has five then, the whip. And I think the bloody tier limits out at four or three. So it's less. I think it has more range. 
and it seems to attack faster but this might just you know because i was maxed out so it looked faster it can critically strike however and it can absorb hp now the absorb hp is a bit weird because it like at least for me it didn't really absorb hp it was more like every single time it started its attack i got eight hp like that was it it didn't matter if i hit one enemy or 50 enemies it didn't stack it just was a one-time effect that per attack happened um the only good thing the, the bloody tears really good at is knockback like if you stand at the bottom in the inlaid library and you just sit there and have to whip whipping the enemies um nothing will get to you but it's not the only weapon that it can accomplish that like the death spiral for example can do that as well or the heaven sword so yeah but they deal more damage now to a very special evolution of weapons because this time it's weapon plus weapon the peacone and the ebony wings that's the two birds uh on their own they are interesting no but oh. I would probably put them at one of the lowest tiers. Now, don't get me wrong. The Okay, Peacon and Ebony Wings, right? I'm not talking evolution with lowest tiers. Peacon and Ebony Wings have actually quite a lot of damage and max out. They have a nice rotation around you. The problem is you have to use two of them to cover everything and they overlap. And it's really hard to aim them for most parts of the game. Like later on when you just stand still, great weapon, right? But... It, Early on, to hit the enemies properly, especially with the circle that you can barely see when it's not active, is really hard. Like, it thins out when in the attack is not active, and once it attacks, it becomes more apparent where the circle is. Now the evolution, however. Vandalier. <sighs> I had a controversial opinion on this one, because I said I don't think Vandalier is that good. I still put it in A tier, but like when people were talking about Vandalier, they put it in their own tier or beyond S, like double S or S+. Plus. And meanwhile, I think I would put Vandalier maybe in... Like, I would put it in S, but a lower S. The reason is you still need two weapons, which means you need a lot of levels and upgrades to get there. And, like, if you do a normal run, you also have to consider... Like, just imagine you would start out with the Peacone and the Ebony Wings, right? How difficult this run would be, because it's so annoying. Then you have to get a total of 16 level ups like to pick them and to upgrade them then you have to pick up a chest for the vandalier and another seven levels to max it out that is that is 24 levels that you put into this weapon it takes so long as last weapon which is what most people do they just pick up the birdies somewhere in the run later on and then they upgrade it very late as last weapon it's honestly it's amazing it's great you can just run through enemies and kill all of them. You still rely on where it's attacking right now, but overall, a top-tier weapon. Like, I'm not arguing with that. Uh, it's really amazing. The only downside is that it takes 24 levels in total to max it out. Now we get to the non-evolve weapons, or those that you can't evolve. Lightning Ring. It strikes randomly at enemies. Honestly, solid item. Like, I take it quite frequently. It just takes a lot of work off of you. And for a majority of the game, I would say up until like 25 minutes, it one-shots the enemies in a huge area. Like combine it with Ken Labrador, amazing. That thing just kills everything. Uh, you pretty much have nothing to do. It sometimes some runs are very satisfying to just look at and see how you decimate all the enemies. Rune Tracer. Oh. Okay, Rune Tracer definitely deserves a way higher rating than the lowest tier that I've given it in the past. No, I actually don't think that was Rune Tracer. I think it put it in B. Now, Rune Tracer is not bad um, once it's maxed out and you have all the right items, right? That makes it super strong. C uh, Spellbinder to increase its duration, Can Labrador to make it wider, and uh, Empty Tome that it fires faster, and Brazer that it also shoots faster. Uh, then, obviously, Spinach would help it to get more damage, um, and Duplicated that it has more projectiles. So, one big use here is, or one big benefit is, all six... Items that you use affect this weapon, right? And they buff it. Now, the problem is you kind of also need them to make it really good. And if you don't have something, then it falls off rather quickly. Rune Tracer just shoots out on the map and it bounces on the border of your screen or if it hits a wall, which can lead to very funny scenarios where a boss is locked in in a little chamber and you walk in and the Rune Tracer just repeatedly bounces in a corner of a wall and deals like thousands of damage per second. It's, it's absolutely bonkers because it constantly bounces around. But aside from that, like, I think it's a very solid weapon, but it just needs a lot of upgrades. Like, few similar to Vandalier with less damage. And more crazy. Center Water? I'm a Center Water defender. I, I love the weapon. 
Uh, it, same issue as Rune Tracer, you need a lot of upgrades, but not that many to make it work. But at max level, it pretty much has an entire circle around you where if enemies step on, they just die very soon after. To combined with Death Spiral, it just leads to instant kills with it. And honestly, I think it's a very solid weapon. Main issue is you can't pick it up early on. It's, it's way too random. Like if you get it, okay, sure, try to get the enemies to walk over the water, but it's too unreliable. Bone? Sure. I mean, you can pick up Bone with anyone in the game, but the chance is insanely low. Like, most of the weapons have a chance of 100, like a weight. If you compare all the weapons of 100, Bone has one of 1. So it's competing, like it's a 1 in uh, 1,500 or something like this to get a Bone. Um, if you use Motachio, you always have a Bone, so that's something else, but it's super rare, so I wouldn't even consider it. I think the weapon is fine. Um, I would say it's a B tier maybe, just because it's really hard early on to deal with the enemies and get all the kills. But then again, like other items struggle with that as well, or weapons. Um, but yeah, I think like I think it's a solid weapon, maybe somewhere in A and B. Um, I just think there's more potential with other weapons, but I think it's solid. Now special weapons. Special weapons are those that are different. Pentagram just kills everything on the screen. It can also destroy your items, all the experience, all the chests, chests that enemies would have dropped and chests that are already dropped. The higher level it goes, the less chance it is that it destroys the stuff, right? And luck affects this, so you can get to a 0% chance of destroying items. It is possible, I always had it when I used it. Um, but yes, a very interesting weapon, especially with Arkar, who hits 60% weapon cooldown reduction. Laurel. Gives you a shield. Now, similar to the garlic, there is one case where I love it, which is where I'm, like, distracted. I didn't notice that the boss at 25 minutes spawn, for example. And it's really great to not die. But, you know, what also helps with not dying? Just killing the enemies. So, again, if you just made a mistake and you want to compensate for this, because one of the worst things that can happen is accidentally dying at 20 minutes and losing out on all the better chests that the bosses drop... Yes, good pick, right? Because you, you can substitute a proper weapon for this one and you still have way more than enough damage to kill the enemies. But aside from that, not that great, you know? Clock Lancet. Freezes enemies, ticks around you. Um, I think the, the screenshot says it ignores speed. Well, I guess, okay, that's Brazer, yes. Uh, it also says it ignores area. Now... I, I don't agree on that, and I gotta say, some of these weapons I don't agree with, they were taken out of the game, and I don't think all of them are true. And I asked on the Discord, and someone also said, like, he's pretty sure that the area affects a Clock Lancet, because I had this happen when I had a Clock Lancet, and I didn't use the Candle Labrador. It doesn't change what the projectile looks like, but how many enemies are frozen. And with the Candle Labrador, it was just bigger. Like, I'm almost certain. Aside from that, Clock Lancet and Laurel have a very unique mechanic where once a death at, at 30 minutes spawns, if you hit him with the Clock Lancet, he gets frozen. And there are record runs where you try to get as far as possible into the game. The longest one I've seen was 43 minutes. And then you have to know each minute that passes, another death spawns. So it starts with one at 30 minutes and then 31 is two deaths, 32 is three deaths and so on. Um, very interesting. Like, that's a unique record run or unique case where these two really shine because you need them. Without the Shield of Laurel, you would just die. Because usually Death manages to hit you a couple of times and then he gets frozen. Uh, items without evolution. So now we get to the items and then we are done. Armor. Reduces any damage you take by one. Now in the past I used to have this in the lowest tier. I bumped it up by one for me personally. Because I used it and I realized you are pretty much immune to damage for very long in the game. Like if you were forced to take armor, hollow heart or the pomerola, like right, so armor or increased health or health regen, I would probably always go for armor because you take so little damage. And because the other two are so much worse, so it's unjustified to put them all into the same tier. Like, I think armor is honestly better. Attract orb, j just comfort, right? You pick up experience from further away, so you don't even have to move anymore because you just pick it up from half a screen across. Crown, honestly amazing, right? Like, 
A crown is not needed, right? It doesn't give you any buffs. But if you have crown, you level up faster, which means you get stronger faster, you have an easier game. And when you just want to farm gold, it means you get to a position very quickly where you can just stand still and let the enemies die. Now, it also helps to farm gold because if you're using Imelda with bonus experience and the crown, you level up very quickly. And if you have the stone mask and you have greed maxed out, that's a power up, then you get a ton of gold out of the level ups later on when you can't upgrade anything anymore 75 gold each time instead of the 25 that it shows because of the increases duplicator top tier along with empty tome and yeah duplicator and empty tome they are probably the the two best things in the game like by far the strongest i would say empty tome is by far better uh simply because it affects almost everything duplicator has its limits but it makes everything better um just fires additional projectiles, but this can be the difference between covering the entire map in the Death Spiral, the Evolved Axe, or just a part and they pass through. Also helps with the King Bible, but it pretty much affects every weapon that has a projectile. Stone Mask increases gold. Totally useless. It's amazing if you want to farm gold, don't get me wrong. But on its own, it doesn't have an effect, it doesn't have an improvement, it has nothing, right? It only helps you to get more gold, that's it. Uh, which is great if you need power-ups. Wings increase movement speed. Oh boy. They have their unique uses. And they have a use in the game where if you get bad power-ups, I would probably pick the... Not power-ups, level-ups. Um, where I would probably pick the wings if I have bad things offered. Because the movement speed is actually not that bad, right? Especially if you're behind. It allows you to dodge enemies. It allows you to run around. Uh, especially in the the first two maps, there are drops on the ground if you go to certain locations that you can pick up, uh, the, where the empty tome, the stone mask, and I think on the first map it's a clover, the spinach, the hollow heart, and something else. I think the pomerola. So if you have wings, you get around faster, but that's also it. There, there's nothing else to it. Later on, there are so many enemies around you that you can't walk through them unless you're maxed out, but they, you don't need wings for that, right? It's like, it doesn't help you, is what I mean. So yeah, that was it. If you have any questions, please let me know. It was quite a fun um, video. I hope you enjoyed the layout. If you want to do me... Uh, if you want to do me, yes. <laughs> if you want me to do anything specific about vampire survivors, please let me know. But if you're new, then hey, how about you would drop a subscribe because I upload challenge videos, I upload record runs, and... I hope you enjoyed the video, see you next time, and I'm out.